Last time on The Incorrigible Party. With Grimby Chum geared of his feeble mind, he accompanies Shakara and Mia through the streets of Heracleon, where the trio make a stop at Alstoff Tinnerman's. Forcing their way into his workshop, they find it empty of gnomish tinkerer, but full of useful items just begging to be taken. Oh, what was that you wanted? More adventure? You got it. Falls are in and shaft. You step through the portal, still invisible for about another 30 minutes or so. Appearing in a small rectangular room. There's no one else in this room. It's lit by the dying flickers of torchlight. Very clearly some kind of, of war room. Is the, the walls are adorned with hanging banners displaying an outline of a tower inside of a circle. The insignia of the paladins of Coltis. And there's a long table in the center of this room with what looks like a map of Aspara unfurled across it. Sculpted pieces are arranged on the map. Carved representations of, of uh, the towers, of sailing ships, and deployed troop units. Behind it, against the wall, is a large weapon rack with an assortment of blades on it. And there's clearly one weapon missing from it, as the, the top two pegs on kind of this, these, you know, vertical rows of, of, of holsters is missing, is empty. Next to it stands uh, an armor stand that is also empty very clearly. Uh, you know you know uh, where you would like place your armor once you've taken it off kind of thing, right? Just completely empty. It's kind of this, <laughs> it looks like a weird mannequin, kind of sticky mannequin, right? Just nothing on it. At either end of this long hallway, what is it about maybe 30 or 35 feet long by about 20 feet wide, there are two closed doors. They appear to be the only exits from this room. The uh, weapon rack, does it look like it's duplicates of the same type of weapons or it's an assortment of different weapons that one person could choose from? They are very distinct weapons. Clearly not the same. They appear to be very unique as well. Uh-oh. Uh, I think, I think I know where we might be. I go over at, to the table and look at the table, look at the map. So on the, the map, like those the units I described, there are very clearly two different types of units. They're, they're just abstract pieces, right? Basically like, you know, a small little slab of, of standing stone. So one type appears to be a gray stone and the others are uh, black onyx. The gray units, they appear to represent the paladins as there are a number of them that are placed in what would be what is known as their territory on um, the map of Aspara. Many of these, these same gray pieces are placed in and around the cities of Goldum and Victure. And it seems that there's there's kind of this this front that is being represented on this map, uh, like this war front in the surrounding forest against whatever the onyx figures represent. And the the two carved wooden towers are of course present. One stands south of Victor, but the other is not located outside of Golden, where it should be. Instead, there is a tower placed northeast of Drukal at the base of the Borgrag Mountain. Oh. And the final pieces, the, the ships, it appears that there's a fleet of ships sailing towards Heracleon. From which direction? From what would be, uh, like on the map, there's Port Coltis. It's clear that Paladin ships are leaving the port and sailing at least in the direction northward up the coast towards Heracleon. You said there was um, black onyx. So those those figurines, they seem to just exist within the surrounding forest, like that forest that you traveled through and met the Grung in between Victor and Goldum. 
just representing some type of opposition clearly to the uh, figures that represent the paladins. Now, remind me, when we were going outside uh, the woods and we came out from the Grung and we're headed toward Goldham, we did see, if I remember correctly, a blue light to the south of there where that other tower you said that we thought was there is actually, there's a second tower up by Dracol and Vorgrag Mountains. We did, did we ever see the tower or did we just see the blue lights? You are correct. You did see the blue light uh, as you got outside of the forest, right? Right on that perimeter as I think, I believe you camped there, I think, before heading to Goldham. Uh, yes, you are correct. You did see uh, the blue light up in the sky. It was still a little too far away to actually make out the tower itself. Okay. But definitely the light was there. Hey, Falzrin, check this out. So I walk over and, and take a peek at what Shaft's looking at on the table. Looks looks like you got a fleet of ships over here heading up towards Heraklion. And and the tower here. There's one up there north of Dracol, you see it? I don't remember ever seeing a tower there. No, I, that doesn't add up to me. Uh, and there's, there's a tower missing down here where there should be one by Goldham, right? I mean, we saw the light, but I don't when we were down that way, but I, we never did see the tower, so... I don't know, maybe they just don't have it laying here on the map. Hmm. I certainly don't like the looks of this fleet of ships heading up towards Heraklion. This is not good. Dr this is way too close to Dracol. Oh, boy. How much time do you think we got left on this invisibility spell? Maybe about half of what we had originally, if that. Well, this is an opportunity to find out some information. We're obviously uh, down here in cultist land. Maybe we can uh, yeah. at least check out and see what's... Is there... I go over to the door on the left-hand side of the map and listen at the door. Seems quiet try to open it. And you roll me a self check. 21. As you open the door, it is unlocked, and you're able to you just want to kind of crack it open and, and peer in? Yeah. Um, did you add your uh, Pastor of the Trace? Oh, no, bonus? I didn't. Not, okay. I don't 31. Know not, but... <laughs> <laughs> so cracking it open, uh, immediately peering in, again, again silently with, with that 31. You immediately see what looks to be an assemblance of, of like benches kind of around this bare skin rug in this larger room. And a little further in, seems that there's a, a fireplace, a type of hearth kind of pressed against the wall. Uh, no sign of anybody in uh, in here from what you can see so far through, through this crack in, in the door you've created. Hey, come check this out. And I open it up more. Okay, Falzerin uh, very gingerly tiptoes over to where Shaft is and takes a peek over his head, I guess, not his shoulder. <laughs> well, I'm invisible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look, can look right through him. <laughs> Falzerin would have to crouch to peek over his shoulder. It appears this is some type of grand bedroom that you've walked into at the very far end of, of this room which would be the south end, I guess, from your position, is is a, a huge, like, king-sized bed uh, against the far wall. And kind of on either side of the fireplace, there are a few windows uh, set into it, and they do appear to be curtained. So uh, there's more of, of those, you know, the paladin insignia tapestries kind of on the walls in here. It does look like it's very nicely furnished. This must be Sammy's place. Isabella's got a portal that leads right to it. Maybe there's something more going on than we even know. I, I think you're right, Shaft. We need to be very quiet here and very careful. Yeah, there's nobody in here. This, uh, here, let's see what's outside. And I'll walk over and open the curtain. Slowly. And it looks like it looks out onto the ocean, onto a type of coastline. Uh, it does look like it's a few hundred feet away still yet from whatever type of build, whatever building you're in. But you are looking at the ocean. 
Um, are there any desks or dressers with drawers in them? I'd like to do a bit of reconnaissance if I think there might be anywhere I could find, you know, maybe some documents or a journal or something. Have we seen anything like that so far? In this room, there doesn't seem to be anything like that. And what about the room that we just left? Was there anything in there? No, it was just the just the, the map table and the weapon rack and the armor stand. Would you like to investigate around and, and look for something? Yeah, I suppose. I'm, I'm just kind of uh, wanting to keep an eye out for anything that might have some valuable information written down. Yeah, I think I'll do the same. Look under his bed for any, I don't know, paladin playboys. <laughs> <laughs> play play paladin <laughs> why don't you both make me a, an investigation roll please 19 for shaft freaking math uh 14 for falzer shaft underneath the bed you find a very alluring display of Palaboys oh. magazines. <laughs> the centerfold, my goodness. <laughs> really make it six to midnight in no time. In addition, you find along the wooden post uh, on the back of the wall, there seems to be a, a little latch. As you know, the, uh, this, this king-size bed has a huge, ornately carved headboard pushed right up against the wall. Okay, I'm going to look and see closely at it to see if it's something that might have a trigger or a trap or some kind of thing that might alert if I open it. Why don't you make me... I guess that would be a perception. Okay. Uh, a, a 10. <laughs> okay. Well, well, looking at it, I mean, your investigation was pretty thorough in just locating it in, in in the first place and actually it looks like the attempt was to obscure it within the ele elegant carvings of this piece itself but very clearly uh, it has a, a hinge on it and I would say it's probably about four inches long clearly this piece of, of length of wood set into it with with a hinge on one end that you could easily grab and, and pull up okay I'll do that I'll open it as you do the bed the whole bed starts to slide away, slide basically to the like the left of the bed, uh, straight right up against the east wall, revealing a small opening. Like an opening that you put stuff in, or like an opening like you lead to another area. It's uh, it would be like like the opening itself would be about the size of like a crawl space. Okay. And on the other side of it is actually a, a, a narrow, like, 5 foot by 25 foot section of room, basically. Like, once you're up and under the crawl space, there's full head height like what was in the previous room, but it just seems there's, like, almost this false wall that's been put up. Jackpot! I found something. I'm going in. Sneaky, sneaky. Good job, Shaft. Inside, there is a small shelf of books and a metal chest. I'll say back to Falzern, it's only some books, not probably worth anything, but there is a chest. You can look at the books if you want to. And I go over to the chest. I'll carefully um, try to get into this uh, little cubby as well. Okay, it's uh, probably a little tight for you, Falzern, although I mean... You're a little wayfish, <laughs> being a half elf. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm tall but pretty slim. As long as you maybe uh, shuffle, shuffle sideways along the wall, you, you're fine. Shaft, you were opening this chest. I'm checking it out first. Uh, check it for traps, of course, just to see if there's anything I can find. All right. Uh, investigation again. Sure. Uh, it's 16. So this chest is about two feet by a foot and a half. It's, it's kind of small. Easy, like easy enough for you to pick up and carry around if you really wanted to. And I, what are you kind of like inspecting around the edges of it as it's not entirely flush against the wall. There's certainly room around to, to be investigating it and peering and looking for anything that may be connected to it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like there's any type of, of uh, like tripwires or anything anyways. There's actually no lock on 
like it's unlatched this padlock on this chest. Okay. I'll open it. Inside there are large bags, sacks. All right. I'll I'll lift them up, sort of get an idea of what the weight is. Is it does it ching, you know, like chain or coins it or something? It does uh jingle and jangle yeah. and it's quite heavy. All right. I'll shut the thing up and I'll sort of move, I'll grab it, take it over to Falzer and go, open up your sack. I will open up my bag of holding. We'll look at this later. And put it inside there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that thing is getting very full, I will say. <laughs> I mean, I can take Danzig out and leave him here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find any books? Um, yeah, so I'd like to I'd like to quickly study the books that I found on this shelf here. Many of them appear to be personal journals, some of which seem to be written by Samuel himself. Many of them are are are, are dated. I mean, so okay, so here's the thing: how much how much time do you want to spend here? Because you do have a bit of a duration here left for your spell, right? Yeah, I think I'm worried that we're gonna get found out. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time, but... Let's glance over the titles. Yeah, basically, I, I would like to, at minimum, look at what each book says it is, um, and then see if there's anything I think might be worth either flipping through or, or snagging to read later. Yeah, so so each of them are... There's, there's half a dozen leather-bound books, and, like, again, they're, they're, they're personal journals, so there's... None of them are, are any type of, of bound or sellable work with, with titles. It's, it's, you know, a quick flip without even reading. It's very clearly uh, like a, a rough handwriting kind of thing, you know. like So, I mean, you could easily take all six of them if you wanted to shove those in your bag, too. Because why not? <laughs> I mean, when in Rome. We're already, we're already going to be in trouble here. You might as well take them. Yeah, I think you're right, Chef. We don't know much about this Samuel character. This might be very helpful information. So I'll I'll wedge them into my bag of holding. Okay. <laughs> you see, as you do, uh, the bag kind of starts to bulge a little bit. You know, <laughs> one book number four goes in pretty easy. Book number five, oh, it's getting a little... Number six, you really have the jam in there. Oh, what is going on out there? <laughs> just, just, just some books, uh, Alamar. T- try to keep keep quiet. We're being stealthy. <laughs> Scoot over, Alamar. There's important stuff in here. <laughs> it is awfully cramped in here. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, so let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and make haste. And I think we found everything we need to find. Before we go too far, I, I'm i trying to remember, did my Wand of Secrets recharge itself or was it spent a long time ago? It does recharge at dawn. It does. Oh, boy. Three, uh, three recharges or do I need to roll? Well, I mean, by this point, like the last time you used it, it, it certainly recharged. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely yeah. recharged. Okay. Well, mechanical question, if he uses a wand, is that casting a spell that breaks? Oh, right. That uh, That is an awfully good question. Because it doesn't seem like he would have to maintain kind of, any kind of concentration unless... Well, I think invisibility says if you cast another spell or get damaged or... Uh, or, or make an attack. Yeah. Because he is using the wand to cast that spell, right? That's what I'm trying to think mechanically is... The wand casting the spell, or is he casting the spell with the wand as a... Spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. I'm going to say... I'm going to say no. Uh, in the instance of the Wand of Secrets specifically, I'm going to say no, because all all it, all it the text for it reads is, you, you use your action to expend one of its charges, and should a secret door or trap be within 30 feet of you, the wand pulses and points at the one nearest to you. So it doesn't make any note of you specifically using it to cast any type of spell. So I'm going to say uh, it would not take away your invisibility if you wanted to use it. 
Okay. I think I will while we're in here in case there's like, you know, a secret pass, a secret door within a secret passage that we're missing. Okay. Yeah. So you activate it. Uh, the wand does pulse and point you right to the activation that Shaft found. Okay. Fair enough. All right, Shaft. I, I thought I would, you know, just in case we were being tricked and there was another thing hiding here, but looks like this is it. Okay. I crawl out. And I go over and let me know when you're out. Uh, uh, okay, okay. I think you're good, Shaft. I'll push the thing back in and let the bed, hopefully the bed will slide back over. And it does, yep. Okay. Then I reach under the bed, pick up a pile of boys and fold it up and stick it in my... <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe the mechanical creatures in this thing. <laughs> So in addition to the door that you used to enter this room, there is one that would be at the north of it. Uh, seems another five-foot door that leads out of this room as well. Okay, let's go listen at that door. Hey, let's check this door out. All right, I'm, I'm right behind you. And it, too, sounds quiet on the other side. Open it up. You open up into another... Lo- this one's a, basically runs... It looks like the entire length of, of the room that you had first appeared in with the portal. At the very end of it is another closed door, and then immediately now to your left on the the wall, which would be the west of this hallway, is another another door. And more. there's more windows uh, on the far side that would be a, the wall across from the door that you just opened that uh, look out more more you know tapestries down this hallway but other than that it, it there's nothing it doesn't appear there's like nothing stored in here or anything it's just simply a hallway it looks like okay i'm gonna go i'll go in and then i'll go right to this door here is that a door right there it is yes i'll do the same listen and if not i don't hear anything open it up while he's doing that i'd like to look out the windows i want to get a better grasp maybe of where we are falls are in looking out the looking out these windows which are so the, the previous windows that looked out onto the ocean would have been looking south. And now this window would more be looking west. And it does seem to be looking more inland. Uh, basically what's kind of a sprawling landscape, quite flat terrain of farmland for nearly as far as your eye can see. Don't see any buildings or people. Nothing in the uh, near vicinity, no. Okay. And I'll go back over to join uh, where Shaft has went. And Shaft, you don't hear anything, but uh, you kind of get a, a bit of a, a waft of, of like uh, wet dirt and uh, maybe old wood, you know, kind of musky, really musky smell, kind of wafting under the under the threshold of the door of the closed door. Interesting. I'll still open it, and it leads. To your certain so, death. So when we were looking out the window, are we up like a number of stories or are we on the ground floor? Do we know? It does look like, sorry, thank you. That's a good question. It does look like you're on the ground floor. Okay. So this door leads down to, uh, to a descending staircase. Hey, stairs going down. Uh, you want to check out the other side before we, before we check it out? Yeah, let's, let's see all of our options. I'm going to start being a little bit faster. Because I know that time is of the essence here. Real quick listen, and then open the door. <laughs> as you're approaching, and you're putting your ear to it, you, you don't hear anything. As you move to, to open it, you hear a big creak and groan of, of like wood swinging open from this room on the other side of it. And you hear, you hear some voices. Two distinct female voices. Then I'll... I'll sort of go, shh, 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 to Falzern. Sort of feel around till I can find him, shh. And then go over and, somebody in there. I'll stick my head up against the, the door and see if I can hear a little better. It sounds like me and Shakara. It's me and Shakara. That doesn't make any sense. How are they here? I don't know. Apparently they didn't go back to the keep, but we saw them there. I don't know. Let me hear, see if I can hear what they're saying. Let's bring the girls back on. Oh, shit. 
What? <laughs> what? I don't know. It's impossible. <laughs> Shakara and Mia, you've thrown open these huge, large double doors, stepping into what looks like about a 10 by 10 foot room. To either side of you, flanking the entrance, are two like 15 foot statues. They appear to be of humans clad in, in like heavy plate armor. Directly in front of you is this kind of raised altar dais kind of uh, in a in a octangular shape with steps that would lead up to this massive stone throne and the two of you are conversing do you know where we might find it huh. do you have any ideas um not really i they didn't really describe it well let's take a look around this room okay I started, uh, I started looking. At the back of this, this huge room behind the throne, there, in the wall, there are three doors set into it. And those appear to be the only three doors that would lead out of uh, this chamber. I do not see anything in this room that looks promising. Shall we try the doors? Okay. Do you want to split up or go to the same door? You take the left, I'll take the right. Okay. Mia. You open up into another large room. There appear to be four what look like sparring dummies. They're kind of these these just these wooden figures. There's notches kind of knocked into them and carved and dents and scrapes in them. Uh, the stone floor beneath you there there's kind of spatters of spattering of blood uh, all over. On the the far wall directly ahead of you there looks like uh, a, a couple of wooden uh, weapon racks with not bladed weapons but you know like what would be wooden sparring weapons kind of kind of thing nothing that would actually kill uh, were you to maybe practice with them and that kind of thing on on the same wall with the door that you entered there is a second second door leading into another uh, chamber Shakar there's there's nothing in here it's like a practice room but maybe there's a closet. Uh, I'm going to go check this closet out. All right. And it looks like it is just a type of barracks. There are about, I think there are 16 different cots in here. Uh, there's nothing in here. I'm coming to see you. What'd you find? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> Shakara, you open your door to find a long, plain hallway uh, so the walls are adorned with tapestries that have the paladin symbol. And at the very end of it, there's an open door that looks like uh, leads to a, a descending flight of stairs. There is a long hallway that leads to a staircase. Let us check the door in the middle before we go down it. Okay, sounds good. The door in the middle leads to... What looks like to be a war room. There's a long table with a map of Aspara uh, sitting on top of it. Two different colored figurines kind of representing two opposing forces are arranged in various places on the map. On the right wall, there looks to be a weapon rack with a number of very unique looking blades uh, housed in it. And past that is a what looks like to be an empty armor stand where you would put on your armor once you've doffed it for, for an evening. Hmm. I don't see what we're looking for, but these blades are really awesome. I want to take a closer look at the map and just see if there's anything written on it. Just other than, like, the name... Like, it's it's a map of Aspara, so other than the names of cities and locales that you would find on any regular, like, cartographical map, uh, no, nothing, nothing particularly of interest. Let's check the hallway, see where the stairs lead. Yeah? You sure you don't want one of these blades? My weapon is sufficient. Alright. Go to the hallway, go down the stairs, I guess. If we don't find anything in the hallway. And you get kind of a waft of of musky, like wet dirt and, and kind of old rotting wood coming up from from the stairs. As you do know, you're on the, like, this is a single floor 
building. Guess we're gonna go check out the dirt? Does seem ominous. All right, well, at least we can see in the dark, right? Let's go. Chapman falls in observing this remaining undetected. You you see Shakara and Mia, and both of them are wearing full plate armor. On, emblazoned across the breastplate is the symbol of paladins of cultists. They're very clearly wearing paladin armor. I I will give give uh, Falsy the old pat, and uh, we will uh, head down the hallway. I think I would follow them. Yeah, to see what they're doing. I'm, we're following. <laughs> Very little time left on this invisibility and oh, passive that's right. trace. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we'll let him get a little bit down the hallway, and then I'll if we're far enough away, I'll go. Let's follow him, but keep us keep a good distance. Okay. Why don't you you both roll me a self check? Adjusted twenty for uh, nineteen. All right. Wait, no, it's more than that, but that's high enough. <laughs> okay. Shakara and Mia descending. The flight of stairs. You find yourself in uh, what looks like to be a, a cellar. It is pitch black down here. Kind of more of a storage area. There's, you know, dirt floor. It looks to be like a source of water coming in from somewhere. Uh, kind of contributing to like kind of the muck that's down here. And many of the, the like reinforcing timbers uh, that would serve as keeping the ceiling from collapsing basically of this underground room is, you know, soaked and clearly wet. And again, you see spots of bolts kind of forming on some of some of the, the cross beams. In the first section of this room, as it seems to be partitioned, it looks like this is like a, a sto- kind of a storehouse. There, there are mainly weapons, like more weapon racks and armor racks, all of which are empty. There isn't a single actual blade or piece of armament down here but in the second half of it as the there are two sections of walls that come in and where a door would be there's just no door it's just like a five foot by like eight foot opening there are what look to be a few dozen large barrels in the back of this room and with, with no other entrances or exits other than the flight of stairs immediately apparent mia barrels yeah that could be it. Let's go check it out. Yes, let's open one. Okay. Here. Here's one. Just take, like, the first one I see. And as soon as you pry that lid off, that first crack, in the pitch black down here, this multicolored glow gives off of the substance in the barrel you have found. It's filled with phlogiston. Yes. We have found it. Awesome. She will be pleased. Do you think they're all full of it? Should we, we should check sure? a few more, yes. Okay. We do not want to anger her. Exactly. So we check a few. Absolutely. And each of them does contain, like, all, nearly to the brim, filled with phlogiston. Oh, man. She's going to be so happy. This, oh, this is exactly what we needed. How are we going to get this back to her? There is a lot here. Oh, man. Those stairs were kind of steep, too. Um, go get some help? Yes, mayhaps we take one barrel. And we can tell her where they are, so so she can send someone else to get the rest. Take one? Okay. I'm gonna pull Falzrin back up the top of the stairs. Yeah, I'll follow. I'm gonna go out through the bedroom again, shut the door, and then go, Okay, invisibility's gonna wear off here. Let's just pretend that we came through... The portal. We just came here. We can go down and help them, but don't mention anything about going to Alamar's library. Don't mention anything about where we went, other than we can say we want to victure, because Shakar is going to know about that. I think that's a good plan, Shaft. Let's do and it. And then we'll just uh, play along. Whatever they want to do, let's figure out what's actually going on here. You notice they were wearing the armor, and they're obviously getting the phlogiston for. Isabella. Yes, that's very interesting. Okay. So, I just, uh, 
You want to go back by the portal and wait? They're obviously going to go that way. I'd like to sort of catch them in the act of, well, I guess they're carrying a, a barrel up here. They're they? going to want to yeah. know why we're here. Okay. Let, that, let's let's go back to the, the portal. Okay. We'll go back to the portal and uh, just sort of stand there until the invisibility spell wears off. <laughs> yeah, I plan <laughs> okay. on uh, I plan on dismissing it once I see them enter the room. There you go. If it hasn't already worn off. Uh, Mia, one of these barrels, like the two of you could definitely both grab one because they stand about four feet tall. They probably have a diameter of about two feet. So they're actually really large. Like there's a lot of phlogiston down here. So to two of you could easily muscle one up to the top of the stairs. All right, we will do that. Uh, okay, so where are you taking it? For now, let us take it to the throne room. We could get a horse and cart. We, there's no way we can take all of this with us. Yeah, it's not all going to fit. Uh, then there's the, you know, people are going to question us what we're doing with this. Mayhaps we take a few barrels, whatever we can fit and whatever cart we can find. Do we go with the cart or do we send travelers for us? We will destroy what we cannot take and then leave all this behind. Okay, I agree. The plan is to destroy anything we cannot salvage. And our other objective is not possible right now. No. There is no point staying here. I do not trust anyone else to do this job. Me either. Um, should we go find the cart first? You go find a cart. I will transport a few barrels up the stairs. Sounds good. So we hear some voices in the uh, Correct. adjacent room. Hank, I'll go over and listen at the door. Do I hear any? What do I hear? Yeah, you kind of hear this interchange between me and Shakara speaking about basically deciding what they want to do with the barrels. It seems they've gotten one to the top of the stairs in that long hallway. And our invisibility is now uh, it's done. Yes, the duration okay. has, has been spent. So I'll open the door up and sort of look in and make sure they're alone. Yeah, it's just them. I open the door and walk in. Yeah, I follow. What, what the hell are you guys doing here? Whoa, 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 what are you doing here? What are you doing here? This was not your mission. What are you doing wearing that armor? In the, in the palace of the paladins? I mean... We don't know where the hell we are. What are you doing are. in the palace of the paladins? We went into the portal, and we don't know where the hell we're going to come out. We got stuck, and now we're here. Portal? Okay, well, I mean, we're just doing what we were supposed to. You're supposed to be getting the artifacts and saving Grimby. Yeah, what is it you're supposed to be doing here with these barrels of phlogiston? Why are you not where you are supposed to be? Yeah, why aren't you in Heracleon? I think you've got a more pressing question to answer. Why is that? Listen, you should be on ships right now. Why are you here retrieving barrels of phlogiston? That was the plan. What plan? Whose plan? Listen. Mia. Yeah? Think, of, think about what they are saying. They do not know. Look, here's what happened. Uh -huh. You guys went through the portal. We went in to see how it worked, because we remembered the word, to see if we could find out what was going on anywhere. We ended up going to Victor. We walked out, and guess who we saw? Who? Who did you see? Jessica. Oh, okay. She was not too happy that we were using her portal, trust me. But she did tell us to get the hell out. So we went back in, and then we came out here. And I don't know where the hell we are for sure, but it seems like we're in the, in the where the paladins are. And then we walk around the corner, and there you are. You gotta fill us in on what's going on here. That is why you should not use Look, magic. You are not... Shakara, we're not gonna in. argue about... What we're supposed to be doing. I don't work for you. Neither does he. If we're in this together to help each other, you're going to have to be honest with us. Yeah, what's going on here? I'm extremely confused. We have found phlogiston. But but why are you looking for it? And, and who has sent you to get it? This makes no sense to me. 
We were sent to fetch the phlogiston in exchange for the artifacts. Did you find the guy that had the artifacts? What's his name? M- Mold... I don't remember his name. Yeah, no, we don't need his name. We need the phlogiston for the exchange. And for Grimby. Alamar said to go see that dude, and he would give you the artifacts. Listen, Alamar Did you find wants... the guy? No, Alamar wants phlogiston. Y- yes. Yeah. We found him. Okay, and? yeah. We found the sure, guy. Sure, but he didn't know he his said... name. Well, I don't remember his name. What was his name? It's, it's Alamar's guy, trust me. Anyway, phlogiston. Help us bring these barrels. I'm going to get a cart. I look over at Falls We need as much as we can take. go, this doesn't make any sense. So, Alamar's friend Mullen. Mullen, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mullen, that's his name. Wants to, wants a deal. No. He wants phlogiston. He is in league with somebody that wants the phlogiston. And we don't know who that is. No. I don't ask questions. We don't. We don't know why they want the phlogiston. No. Well, phlogiston, so far, has not been a good thing for us. Listen, no. we're going to take as much as a wagon will hold. We're going to take it to the ports, take it to Heraklion, and we're going to destroy the rest. How did you get down here so quickly? Uh, we use the portals. Yeah. I see. So you came through the portal in the, in the big room with the table and the map? Yes, of course. Did you look at the map? Yeah. I saw that it is a map of a spot. Did you see the tower up by Dracal? What? I mean, Shakara no, looked at it. I was that. looking at the shiny daggers. Yes, it's... Something is odd about that map. Where there should be a tower by Goldham, there isn't one. Huh. And where there shouldn't be a tower by Dracal, there is one. That's weird. So Cultus plans to expand. Yeah, this is hitting a little too close to home now. Yes, we must stop him. There's also a huge fleet of ships heading up to Heraklion. Oh, wow. Okay. Um... Who is on the ships? I don't know. I, that's just represented on this map. Looks like, I mean, based on what I could surmise, it looks like paladins. I would think so, too. There's hardly any of them around here. Then it's best we hurry. We must get this as much phlogiston as we can. I'm going to get a cart. Yes, Mia, run. Go get the cart. I, I hurry out the temple to go find a horse and buggy. So just so I understand, we're taking this phlogiston to Mullen so he can give it to somebody to give us artifacts to be able to shield our minds from going up and taking out the Neogi. Yes, of course. So we can get the piece of armor to give to Isabella to help the guy that we're here with. Yes, who we're afraid is building a tower close to Dakal. Now, yes. This is a mess. Yes. Are we doing the right thing here? We are doing as we are told. I I don't do what I'm told by anybody. Who's telling you this? Mullen? You are telling me right now. Mullen has just said, in order to get the artifacts, he needs phlogiston. Alamar, what the hell was Mullen need phlogiston for? I was uh, wondering the same thing. Can we trust this Mullen guy? Phlogiston is quite powerful in inexperienced hands. Quite dangerous. Which is why we must destroy the rest that is here. We cannot leave any behind. Shakara, what's this Mullen guy look like? Maybe you're talking to the wrong guy. Mia spoke with him. I stayed behind, so as to not frighten him. How would you describe him, Alamar? What does he look like? He is average height, graying at the temples, short cropped hair, a human, strange gray flecked eyes. That also describes many of the wizards on that island. Exactly. So how do you know you talk to the right guy? How do you know you're not taking phlogiston back to somebody that's going to use it in the wrong way? If Alamar recognizes him, Alamar can come back with us and confirm. I don't like it. You said his eyes seemed a bit unique, Alamar. 
Yes, peculiar gray flecks uh, from an accident. Yet as a child, playing with magics he did not understand, nearly lost his sight. Quite distinct. Well, we'll ask Mia when she comes back, since she's the only person that saw him. And if it's not the same guy, I don't think we take Phlogiston into this person we don't know. Wait, do you want to, are you going to start grabbing barrels from the basement is while waiting for Mia, or? Yeah, I'd like to bring up at least four barrels total. Okay. I mean, I'll help as long as this all pans out. So, yeah. So in, you know, uh, another five to ten minutes, you're able to muscle up three more barrels. Uh, you want to move them and move right into the large, like, throne room area? Yes, I want to take them into the throne room so we're closer to the loading them to the cart. Now, wh- wh- Shakara, why don't we just use the portal? Yeah. Why are you putting Doesn't it in that a cart? much easier? That is a very good question. It would be easier to use the portal. I am sorry, I forgot. Is, is everything all right, Shakara? Have you seen any other paladins here in your time? No, we have. We've seen no one except for y- you and Mia. Hopefully we do not run into anybody while trying to move this. Exactly. I don't even know a way out of here. We came in through the portal. Show me on the map. Or have we lo- pulled all the barrels up? Yeah, so yeah, you've kind of moved the four barrels into this uh, throne room. And are, I imagine, kind of there speaking, uh, right? Yeah. As you kind of hear the sounds of, of a horse and a wagon outside. As the doors to this temple are, are still ajar, and uh, Mia has returned. Show me on the map Cultus's plans. I'll take her over and point out what we talked about. Guys, I have a, I have a cart. While they're doing that, I will uh, talk to Mia to inquire about her description of Mullen. Now, Mia, I need you to describe, to the best of your ability, what Mullen looked like, any unique features that stood out. Mullen, Mullen, Mullen. Okay, um, he's a human, about average build, okay. average age, you know, um, usual robes, uh, blue eyes. Blue eyes, you say? Yeah, blue eyes. Um, You're sure of that? brown hair. Yeah, I think so. Blue eyes and brown hair. That doesn't match the description of the mullen that we are supposed to find. Oh, I mean, subjective. His eyes were blue. He's looking at the sky. I don't, you know. Shakara. Brown hair. Yeah, you know, like a little salt and pepper. He's average age. Shakara, how are we going to destroy the rest of these phlogiston barrels in the cellar? That should be easy enough. I walk out of the map room into the throne room. Let's get rid of them now. Yes, let's go destroy these barrels before we leave. Might want to stand I'm back. I'm going to follow them. I'm just at a distance. I'm going to stay back with Falzern. Okay. So down back to the to the descending stairs. Uh, so how exactly do you want to try to destroy them? I mean, you all know that phlogiston is incredibly flammable and like incendiary. Can we kick the boys off the mic for a second again? Sure. sure. And when we come back, can we kick the girls off the mic for a second again? Because <laughs> I think Falzern and I are going to stay at the top of the stairs. This is okay. ridiculous. So we can do it that way. I love it. So down at the bottom of the stairs, I'm going to whisper to Mia and try and, and not have the boys here. Yeah. I think they are on to us. I think so too, but they told us everything. Work it for all we can. They asked us why we are not using the portal. Okay. Take the phlogiston back to Heraklion. And Mullen has gray eyes. Oh, gray eyes, dang it. Let's take the barrels into the war room and see if they'll activate the portal for us. That may work. First, let's destroy these. Yeah, how... How... I don't have fire. Let me try something and I'll just take uh, my sword and just... Shit, I don't want to do it with my sword. <laughs> Can I just knock over a barrel and, and empty the phlogiston onto the ground? Yeah, if you want to just start dumping them, that's that's totally fine. Like piercing the barrels and just draining it. If if that's if you think that's sufficient to get rid of them, you, you know can what? We don't do that. care if 
touches our skin, whatever. Uh, before the, before we go back up the stairs, I'll look at you and I'll hold out my um, potion of fire breath and I'll chug it. We may end up fighting before this is over. <sighs> Bring it on. Falzern and Shaft just staying at the top of the stairs as me and Shakara descend into the dark cellar below. You want to have a quick conversation? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think we'll back up. We'll wait till they go down to their out of earshot to us, and I'll go. This isn't lining up. The story doesn't match. Yeah, this is. A, I have a bad feeling about this. Something seems off. It, is it? Do you think it's possible that this isn't really Shakara and Mia? You, what do you mean? We've seen doppelgangers before. Wow, can you believe what just happened? Oh my gosh, the, uh, things are just getting crazy. You can visit us at incorrigibleparty.com for additional world NPC information to get all your Incorrigible Party merchandise. Join us on our Discord, linked on our website. Recently, the Incorrigible Party has started streaming on Twitch. Do you want to watch video games, board games, interact with us, Catch us on live after party recordings. Follow us on Twitch at Incorrigible Party. If for some reason, probably because you're incorrigible, like us, you can't get enough of our content, please support us on Patreon. Our Patreon gives you early releases to episodes, extra inspiration to give your favorite hero, Mia, wink wink, or the DM, I suppose. Patreon exclusive content includes Patreon exclusive mini campaigns. This podcast is sponsored by Critical Hit Design at criticalhitdesign.com. Thanks to Tabletop Audio for allowing us to use any ambient sounds or music during our show. And our intro and outro is by Josh Jarvis. Contact him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com for any inquiries. Happy adventuring!